I'm here with Dustin Diamond, the star of NBC's Saved by the Bell. And who do you play in uh, Saved by the Bell? Uh, Samuel Screech Powers, but I'm otherwise known as Screech. Screech, right. Uh, what is the show about? Uh, it's about a half an hour. He's best remembered as the nerdy sidekick Screech on the 90s hit TV series Saved by the Bell. <laughs> Could you at least talk to him, see how he feels about this? No, I mean, obviously playing Screech was a comedy character, but then being a kid, my parents would put me to bed and sometimes I'd sneak up and I'd see like, you know, George Carlin or yeah. Steve Martin or Stephen Wright. And, and uh, it was really just kind of a fun thing. It was, you know, you bring the whole family together and as you get older, you know, comedy, uh, the power of laughter was is such an amazing this thing. My flea circus. <laughs> oh, you caught me. I couldn't kill him. I love the little guys. The hardest thing about being a child star is um, giving up your childhood. You don't get a childhood, uh, really. I mean, you're a professional. You got to know your lines and rehearse and practice. You know, it was making sure that uh, you were the funniest and the best that you could be, because if you weren't funny, you could be replaced. When was the last time you saw any of the cast members? It's been ages. I mean, I haven't seen Mark Paul since I was 16. Really? Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen Tiffany or Elizabeth since then either. You know, I'm 39. It's been a minute. So after that, it was like, oh, well, he's the bad boy. He's bitter. He hates everyone. He's, he's, you know, he's kind of turned his nose up to the world. And I really haven't. It's the farthest thing from the truth. Do you still want to um, pursue acting? Do you want to be a public figure? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is, it's all I know. I mean, I've been doing it, you know, acting and, and performing for since I was eight years old, so it's really my bread and butter. It's it's what I know best, and I'm I'm fairly good at it. You know, it's, it's I'm pr I'm proud of the work that I've done when I've done it. It's just uh, how do you come off of such a phenomenal, you know, phenom role of this Screech character, and then break out of that mold and do something different. I'd audition, and every single time they'd say, "Hey, we loved it, but we saw too much Screech in it." Like, well, I, I can't change my bone structure. I mean, what, you know, how am I, what do you want me to do? I'm getting to the point where it's, I need a family. I want kids, you know, I want, you know, the full, my, my wife and I were gonna actually make legit and official. And um, it's, I want to put the tomfoolery and malarkey behind me. You know, it's time to, for that clean slate, time for the change. Rather peculiar opening credits here. Seems NBC is going with the stock photos from season two that you would think would be updated for season three. I'm at a loss for words here. Then again, maintaining continuity is not NBC's forte. Despite Zach's kind gesture from the 4th of July episode, Kelly and Zach have now parted ways and that does not change the fact that she will works at the max. So to ponder Zach's next move, you know what will really shake things up? an episode about chess. How would I describe this moment? I tell ya, I'm just moved. Hey, and it's a touchdown! <laughs> Not only is this an episode that makes 
this most sought after curricular sport that high school honor societies rally around. It's checkmate, they're playing chess, not football. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, when it's you versus the world, the least you can do is to make the first move. Oh, that sure was an exciting match, wasn't it, Zach? Oh, yeah, there's nothing more thrilling than geek to geek combat. I'm even more humored that the writers thought the chess match needed radio coverage. He gets pawn to C1, takes knight. Featured today is a match between St. Murray's, a newly formulated school that was probably living off the grid, versus Bayside. This match has hockey mullet head versus the Al Borland wearing plaid Avenger. Well, why? Well, it sets the tone. These two will be cleared off the plot board soon enough. Okay, this is the moment you've all been waiting for. Oh no, look who else they decided to dust off of Pilot Bickerstaff. Oh Samuel, I'm so excited. Not everyone gets to be the girlfriend of a chess jock. I'm guessing she is set to star in an episode in a chess show that shows her on screen struggle about whether to do a reality show. <laughs> I read that Tori Spelling is a terrible speller. She blames it on the years of being called Miss Spelling. I don't know, I don't know anymore. The chess star of the house is Screech. Apparently he hasn't lost a game yet due to Violet donning him with his signature lucky beret that is blessed with the power of pawn promotion. Go ahead, hunk mine, annihilate the dork. <laughs> <laughs> Screech is due up and for good luck, Violet tells him to do the best impression of his 12 year old looking opponent having a stroke. <laughs> the inn keeping up with the non-continuity spirit is the Bayside Spirit Squad. Fish and knife! Let's go Bayside! Fight, fight, fight! Pond, fish and fruit, queen! Bayside is a winning team! Funny, I always thought chess requires a lot of attention and the audience of a peanut gallery. <laughs> Surprisingly, the writers played out this scene quite masterfully to actually have the makings of an actual chess match, as all chess moves were clearly represented. And Screech starts off with a traditional Latvian king's pawn gambit. Go Screech, flatten this kid! If you're looking for a competitive game of chess, consult searching for Bobby Fischer, because Screech easily wins as fast as a high school wrestling takedown pin and no more than six in moves. <laughs> Checkmate. <laughs> this Win catapults Screech to the championship match, which means to which school he will be facing in the tournament. And the game is over. Screech wins the semifinals and goes on to the championship against Valley. So the only go-to lazy rerun of a rival is Valley. Suddenly Screech is the ace number one chess jock because chess is apparently now Bayside's weapon as a choice, a ruthless game over their more crowd drawing sports such as football. Sorry AC, but you gots to chill. Will you autograph my program? If you beat Valley next week, you'll be famous! <laughs> Zach doesn't care for whatever or whomever he can manipulate to stuff his pants with. Greenbacks is a turn on for him. Famous? Well, with the right promotion, he could be famous. And I could be rich. His marketing master plan is merchandising. Featuring Screech, the t-shirt. Oh, and what a bargain! Only ten dollars a piece! That's oh, right. probably oh. a dozen. I can't help myself. I'm a fool in love. Now, isn't that the face of a deformed baby you've come to love? Since everybody loves Screech? I say machoism is dead! Right, Preppy! Big burly biceps like these are yesterday's news. Little bony arms like these are what's happening today. <laughs> they will buy whatever cheap, pretty crap Zach throws at him using his instamatic homemade Screech printer. Today's man has mental muscles. The Screech Rally is short lived as Vinny and Guy, two over the hill 20 year old looking guys from Valley enter. Who just crawled out of the sewer? Vinny and Guy Guy. The Master Cousins. Holy potatoes! I'll have you know, those two are on the full scholarship in home economics. Hey, we didn't crawl out of no sewer. Yeah, we hitched a ride on a garbage truck. <laughs> They are here not to trade recipes, but flaunt their newest chess player from the Iron Curtain of Russia, Peter. Yeah, and not only is he Russian, he's from the Soviet Union. <laughs> ha 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 ha, in Soviet Russia, I check you. <laughs> Zack and Slater lay down a wager of $100 that Screech will take on all comers from Valley. So in pro wrestling stereotypical fashion, explain to me why he had to be a Russian. Whatever. His obvious phony Russian accent does not make him authentic. It's simple, I use the Spassky Bishop block. 
Well, Spassky Bishop Block. How do you know about that? Spassky is my uncle, although Aunt Sophia has thicker mustache. Sorry, Saved by the Bell stereotypes you might throw at us viewing folks. Not all Russians are as attuned into chess. Greach and Peter then size each other. <laughs> Screech learns from Peter that his patent in chess move is none other than this Spassky Bishop block that could provide some defense against some chess moves, if any. Come on, what else you got? Spassky practically invented chess. I oh, don't stand a chance. I may as well quit now. Yeah. Yeah. Screech, don't listen to those guys. They're all talk. Remember when I said that the Spassky Bishop block was useless? That's because it is. It's a horseshit made up move. I know, but they're saying the right words. <laughs> So I deduct the writer's one demerit for trying to key into our intellect by being chess savvy. And besides that, you've got something he doesn't have. Your lucky beret. Hey, that's right. Yeah. Since I have to do all the hard work for you, NBC, I hardly doubt Spassky was the Babe Ruth of modern day chess because according to history, it has been around since, oh, at least the 13th century. I hardly doubt Spassky had any say or influence into the sport because it was developed 700 years before his birth. You will win, you will win, you will win, you will win! Next time, NBC, consult the Encyclopedia, the original search engine. You two muckety mucks, <laughs> let's double, nay, triple that bet. Triple? All the fake tennis talk seems to have Screech spinning around in a frenzy, but Zack, Slater, and Violet. Confirm with him obvious inspiring cliches that will confirm his projected win at the end of the episode. You will win, you will win, you will win, you will win! How can he add anything to the bet when he never bet on himself in the first place? Now we are introduced to one of the most ill-contrived, unneeded, not wanted scene that only further demonstrates that what may be funny to you looks like thrown together crap to others. Eight, 49, and 50. Yes, they are chess players, but finger stretchers? One and two and squeeze, squeeze. <laughs> this is a chess, a game. Of intellect and quick precision timing, you should be flexing your brains, not your fingers. It's a call to thinking man's sport, not Phi Ed. You're right. I wouldn't want to get chess finger before the big game. <laughs> chess practices turn into up and close and personal photo ops with Screech. What possible uses could come out of this? What are you doing? Exploiting you. Yep. To prove to your girlfriend that if you think I'm not good looking, well, here is proof that inner beauty is only for ugly people. Then Allison Fox from Chess Boy Magazine enters. Zach feels like singing to the tune of Robert Palmer for he finds her simply irresistible, but she only has eyes set on Screech for some naughty chess photo spread titled Wanna Mate. I'm Allison Fox from Chess Boy Magazine, and I'd really like to check out your moves. <laughs> you know what I mean. Maybe it's me, but I got a feeling Screech is being used as a pawn here. But what does Screech know about seduction or dating for that matter? Because he's slow to pick up on those social cues. Not exactly. Allison invites him to lunch at the Max, but the Bayside Bunch warns Screech that you don't want a self pretentious, self centered, and spoiled young heir to a TV tycoon hot on your tail of jealousy. Oh, come on! I just don't get it. There are mysteries you just can't explain. <laughs> like, why does Sinead O'Connor have a hairdryer? In the school hallway, Allison calls Vinny to lay out her best made plans to break up Screech and Violet so that Screech will be hopelessly devoted to depression. The dweeb totally fell for it. So, like, I'll break up him and his girlfriend, and he'll be way too bummed out to play chess. What's weird about this scene is that Allison has this funky accent exorcism where she keeps fading in and out from talking in a normal tone of voice to the key of Shirley Temple. I'll see ya at the Galleria. <laughs> Bye. Why all of a sudden do the writers feel she needs to put on a fake facade? Shouldn't it be the other way around to the type of women that never give Screech the time of day? Violet sees the pair together, but she doesn't catches on that her boyfriend is the most gullible ass kicker we have ever seen. Allison is uh, from Chess Boy Magazine. They want to do an article on me. Oh, wonderful. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you. It's not just an article, Screech. We want you to be our centerfold. And Screech even goes so far as to allow Allison to wear his beret with the promise that Screech will most certainly be guaranteed that chess boy photo spread. I never wore the hat of a genius before. Oh, and no. See, I gave that to Samuel and he never let sure. anyone <laughs> Yeah, and chess boy is a front for child porn. Now, I think of chess as the great equalizer. See, no matter how big or small you are, we're all the same size on the chessboard. Ugh, you are so deep. 
I mean, for every idiot proof system device, there always comes in a, a long, a new, improved idiot who will arrive to overcome it. We're having a pool party at the Chess Boy Mansion on Saturday, and I'd like you to come as my personal guest. <laughs> Samuel can. <laughs> we have plans. Violet, did you hear that? I get to swim in the pond-shaped pool. Allison then invites Screech to the Chess Boy Mansion to swim and frolic with the rest of the Chess Boys in their pond-shaped swimming pool with its owner and CEO, King Bishop, all dressed up like a king. Need a new bathing suit, new towel? Gosh, I better pump some iron. <laughs> then Violet leaves while Allison makes off with the beret. Hey, wait a minute, isn't that Screech's beret? Oh, um, I uh, must have forgotten. <laughs> Luckily, Zack has got some feeling down below in the equator and stops Allison to thwart the hat heist. Hey, Screech, be more careful with this. Got 300 bucks riding on you and your magic hat. The girls go to check on Violet's well-being in the locker room. I am not sad, I'm furious. Yeah, she's taking it well, telling off her boyfriend for being a simpleton dumbass. <laughs> Mother warned me not to go out with him. <laughs> He'll break your heart, she said. But did I listen? No. Violet, calm down. Oh, I most certainly will not. I have given him the best semester of my life. The girls concur that do not argue with the thought that you are dating the dumbest idiot on earth. Not Screech's fault. Not completely. It's that reporter. Jesse's right. All Screech cared about was the article. That girl was coming on to him. And the doofus didn't even realize it. So the Violet and the girls set off in search for Screech. You mean Sammy's not interested in her? <laughs> oh, golly goose. Violet locates Screech, but finds his behavior to be quite disturbing as he drops off his pants to ask her how he looks. <laughs> For Screech, who wears skinny jeans, I think you took the phrase, getting into her pants the wrong way. Are you sure these look good on me? Zack and Screech follow to inform Screech that within 20 minutes, Allison has stole his beret, went to Valley, took a picture of her and her girlfriend Vinny and of herself with the beret and all in time to send the picture with a ransom note. Oh, look at that. She's got the same hat I do. It is your hat, Screech. It can't be. Mine's in my locker. It's gone. She stole my beret. We return back to the max with Screech all put together but still drowning his sorrows in a milkshake. <laughs> A milkshake always saved by the bell. Getting a little edgy there with your metaphors. He looks so sad. I just want to go over there and give him a big hug. Zack and Slater return to give him a shiny new beret to fool Screech into thinking they performed murder one on Vinny and Allison and got it back. My beret! Hooray! Yeah! Go in that chess tournament. Go get him, Screech. Come on, no problem. You guys are the greatest. When they got their champ back into motion, Zack amp ups to the souvenir beret sales because everyone wants to be like everyone's favorite typecasted character whom never grew out of school, not to mention faked his own porno for the publicity. Get your Screech berets right here. Get your lucky <laughs> Screech berets. Screech berets. Screech later runs into Violet in the hallway and offers some dirt on Allison. I have to tell you about Allison. If that is the kind of trollop you want, fine. But as far as I'm concerned, you are a bum. <laughs> Violet, what's the matter? Like you don't know, Mr. Chuckmate of the month. Screech wants her to please speak slowly and clearly, but clearly Violet is not fluent an idiot. And where'd you get the stupid hat? You gave it to me, remember? No, Samuel. The one I gave you had my initials on it. Especially when she spoils the beans that his real initials SP is on the real bread. Cheap imitation. Is this property of Frenchie's pizza? <laughs> During the championship chess match, Zach Morris and Slater kidnap Peter, take off his clothes, and out pops Zach with the same identical wig Peter was wearing. <laughs> Thank you, comrade. No problem, bitch. Come, let's go, Ski. Okay, Ski. So now they have committed their felony in kidnapping and assault for the day. It's time to go to the trifecta and throw the game. What are you doing here? Where's Zach? Um, well, he asked me to fill in. He said he wasn't feeling like himself. The only problem is Zach has never played chess and therefore refuses to play a game he is bad at. The Soviet gets the first move. Pawn to King's Rook 2? That's pretty unorthodox style. <laughs> and therefore throws the game and giving Screech the win by forfeit. Surrender, Screechnovich. You're too good. Too good. Yeah! Peter manages to climb out of his 
backstage confinement area despite the fact he was hogtied earlier. Incredible! First the Russian was winning, then the Russian was losing, now the Russian's hopping on stage in his underwear? What a game, huh? Zach confesses to Mr. Belding the truth and how Screech and Peter knew nothing about the bed. Dude, sir, you see, we made this teeny tiny little bet with Valley. Uh, right, sir, but you see, they stole Screech's lucky hat so he would lose. That's right, we did it for Bayside, sir. Hats? Kidnapping? Gambling? That's it. Both schools are disqualified for us. Oh, my God. Wrong, actually, for Screech is just as guilty in this chess point shaving scam and declaring earlier that he would up the bet with Peter near by listening? If we called off the bet, would you let them play? <laughs> All right, but only if you call off the bet. All right. People should seriously stop expecting normal from Saved by the Bell. We all know it's never going to happen. Is everybody happy? <laughs> Why not? Well, what do you want? Screech is starved for attention and inspiration, so Violet enters and confesses she will always love him until her father decides to move you to a new zip code on a better show, Wink Wink. Violet! I thought you hated me. Oh, that was before I realized that you were manipulated by powerful forces and you couldn't help yourself. I love you, Sammy. I love you too, Violet. With less than a minute left in the game, Screech takes home the victory as Peter felt the wrath of the checkmate when Screech's inferiority is undeniable. Checkmate. <laughs> Episode concludes with Zack holding up the latest box of Screech you knows, which are guaranteed to make you sick as fuck, which will drive you to jobs working on derivative shows that should have never been born. Okay, so I didn't win the bet, but I've got the new cereal of the champs, Screechios. <laughs>